Hello, in this video we're going to go over the standard normal distribution um, for it's for A level mathematics students really. Um, you any of you looking at older videos on this will see lots on the standard normal distribution, but to be honest, you'll probably find that it's been used unnecessarily for the new spec because um back at just a few years ago in the old spec there were no the calculators did not give values for normal distribution and you had to use tables and you got tables for this thing called the standard normal distribution here which has mean of zero and standard deviation of one um and that and so we always had to refer back to that so if you look at older videos on this you'll see the talk of the standard normal distribution coming on probably earlier than i've brought it up here um, with all the, the previous video we didn't need to use it with all these questions that we've done in the previous video even inverse questions where you're given a probability and you need to find a value you don't need to use the the z distribution uh, the z the, the um, standard normal distribution uh, in those type of questions but we can't ignore it completely well, partly because it's actually it's mentioned explicitly in the exams at times and there is a type of question where you need it and so that's what we're what, what we're going to do in this video before that i'm just perhaps uh just can't resist the temptation to do a bit of talk at least to the pure maths involved in here this is the pdf of the general normal distribution with mean mu and standard deviation sigma small case sigma whereas this of course is the pdf for the standard uh, for the standard normal distribution so you put replacing mu with zero and sigma with one um right so it's often incorrectly uh referred to in te a level textbooks and in um your videos and various instructions that the, that this transformation this transformation will transform uh, to this by means of two transformations and that's not quite true unfortunately but it doesn't really matter but it's often incorrect because if you notice three things have changed here the height has changed it's kind of this one's been stretched upwards it's also been stretched across and it's been moved so in fact it's three transformations if you look if you compare the graph here we've got a minus mu we've got a sigma squared on the bottom but we've also got this sigma squared here so if we're starting off with this graph it's actually a combination of three transformations but to me honest it doesn't matter i'm just mentioning it just in case you see videos or see textbooks even where they talk about it being a stretch and a pull from one to the other there's more to, there's actually three but it doesn't matter because in fact the real thing is to do with what's called the cumulative distribution and i really am getting off the subject a little bit here but the cumulative distribution is the uh the what's often talked fx it's the function such at p is less that the value of it take is less than a particular value of x and it's to do with integrating between minus infinity and whatever the value of x is of this function okay um so and similarly sometimes the, when we talk about the cumulative distribution of this function it's sometimes called well it's not it's not it's referred to as a psi function again it's not a term i used very much but you will see it and that is basically the area function for the standard normal distribution and it gives the areas to the left hand side um here so that gives us a probability that x is less than x for this one <clears throat> now if you look at the these functions then indeed there's just two transformations from one to the other but when we're talking about areas you probably hopefully i haven't lost you so far it doesn't really matter it, i'm probably going beyond where we need to go i just want to just um perhaps for those who go on to do stats or a pure maths course later dispel some of the myths i see about the transformation the graphs 
do not absolutely stretch and move without they actually they, they don't really but when we talk about the areas we can basically use this transformation and the pure mass behind it is actually related to something we do cover next year which is quite a nice topic when we, you're given a pdf of a function and you're given some related function to that pdf how to find the pdf of it so in this case we we know the pdf of the z distribution of the z standard normal distribution is that and to get to this would be do would be using this formula for from one to the other where x is equal to sigma times z plus mu and you apply that technique it's a little bit it's not beyond what we'd probably be asked to do but apply that technique that we're going to learn next year when you're transforming one pdf to another and you will end up getting from this pdf to this pdf okay All right but it's that because the integration is impossible anyway or very difficult uh, we won't be doing this particular example, but basically that's what it's all about But just to reiterate in terms of the air resistance in terms of answering the questions this probably doesn't matter that much It's the actual this these formally or that or that you'll normally see it written like that are Key because when we're talking to it about areas you can trans uh, you can actually get one x value and one z uh, and transform it to another uh, the areas will be equivalent uh, along there. They will be the same using that transformation. Okay, right. So um, let's do a question. Let's do an example. Here we've got an example. Example is not. Uh, it's the kind of thing where we will have to use the standard normal distribution. Or that's the the most. Um, the most appropriate thing to do anyway use the standard normal distribution uh, the problem is here we don't know the mean so we can't just put it into a calculator because we don't know the mean and that's what we're actually trying to find out so we have to work with the standard normal distribution so basically what what are we given here well we're given that the z value here we know it's going to be to the right hand side of that we're given that this is 0 0.9 and this is 10 and we've got given we're, we're given that the standard deviation is 2 so we're given that that's a normal distribution with unknown mean which is what we're trying to find out and standard deviation okay and we can't put it in the calculator like that because we don't know the mean but so we have to work with the standard normal distribution now standard normal distribution let's just say that's got a tighter standard deviation might look like that and there we do this is a z distribution there we can work out this number and then we can use this transformation to convert one to the other so we can work out this number now i don't that you may find for certain key values like uh, that there's um like 90 percent or whatever that there's for a uh, table of formally for this um, but i prefer to use a calculator because it's get it's, it's good to get used to using the calculator the formula book does give some of these values but why do it when you can get from the calculator anyway is my view so we can get what this z value here for the particular z value where 90 percent is is below it um so um we've um we can go to menu seven and it's invert it's inverse cd i've put the numbers in already here but obviously you can just type them in 0 0.9 the standard deviation is one and the mean is zero so that gives us 1.28155 okay or 1.28116 say 1.2816 to five signals and figures that should be enough or use it more memory on your calculator okay so put that uh, uh store that number or just write out enough significant figures so we can now use this transformation okay because we can say 
that the z value which is one point let's write it out the transformation we're going to use is z is equal to x minus mu over sigma so we can say that 1.2816 is equal to x and we know at a corresponding x value to this z value is 10 take away the mean which is what we want to find out divided by the standard deviation okay so we can rearrange that and get mu is equal to 10 take away 2 times 1.2816 And that comes to 7.44. Okay, so let's go on to the next example. Well, two the, what two differences is here one that the unknown is a standard deviation, but notice the inequality is the other way around. And so we haven't done CDFs yet, but it is important to appreciate the direction of the psi function. And any CDF for that matter is that way right is the, the, the inequality going less than not more than okay so we have to deal with that it's not difficult but we need to deal with it so here we go so the solution well let's draw the Z thing first of all we've got X greater than 9 is 0 0.6 but the key number we're after here is actually the 0 0.4 here so that's the number that we really want because we want the in the way the any cumulative function goes it goes to the left hand side and that's how a CDF works so it's 0 0.4 so we've got the probability that oh, let's leave that there for the moment 0 0.4 Right, so let's go to the Z distribution now. Z distribution, that's something different really. The, the standard normal distribution. Um, now, here we go. So here, again, what we want to find out is the appropriate Z value. Okay, the appropriate Z value such that we've got 0 0.4 here. So we want to find that Z value out. So we're going to bring the calculator up to do that. Here we go, press seven, three. This time the error we're looking for is 0 0.4. Standard deviation one, mean zero. And we've got a negative thing which we really should not be we should be quite happy about because we would expect it to be negative because the mean is zero so it's minus 0 0.25335 minus 0 0.25335 okay so that's the um that's the Z value corresponding to 0 0.4. Okay, so we can then just use the transformation. Z is equal to X minus mu over sigma. So we have minus 0 0.25335 equals to x minus mu over sigma x is the equivalent x value here is 9 well, I didn't write it in the original thing but it's 9 take away the mean which we are given which is equal to 10 divided by the standard deviation which is what we want to work out so we can see there's both negatives on the side there we can see we can see there's negatives on both sides so we can just work that out and say sigma rearranging that equals to minus one or minus one over minus 0.25335 or you can drop the negative sign if really 0.25335 or of course you can drop the negative sign as i say so that equals to 
3.95 to three Singleton figures is the standard deviation. Okay, so that in, well, unless we're actually dealing with the um, with hypothesis testing, which we'll come on to uh, soon, the only real reason why we would are likely to use the the Z kind of transformation, the standard normal distribution, is if for some reason the question kind of forces us to, it could do, or these kind of questions where you're working out an unknown mu and an, and an unknown, or an unknown sigma, or both, in which case you would uh, need two pieces of information and you'd get a simultaneous equation and then you'd follow this twice. And there are plenty of videos around which say it walk you through that. So I think I'll leave it there. And I think was, uh, in principle, we've put, got the main idea of normal distribution for OCR or for any of the boards for A-level. Uh, thank you very much. Bye.